The Samsung Galaxy S9 is one of the biggest smartphone releases of 2018, so it's only fitting to have one of the biggest tips and tricks guys on YouTube to represent it. More than 100 tips split into four timestamp sections to help you find exactly what you're looking for. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching the Video Gadgets Journal, and this is a monster guide to the Samsung Galaxy S9. Let's kick this off with one very cool feature, turning a video into your lock screen. To do this, go to gallery and select a video you have, and then tap on the three dots in the top right hand corner and set as wallpaper. Now you can have up to 15 seconds of any video as a wallpaper, but you can edit it if you want to. So I'm just gonna trim this a little bit to make sure that my hand just comes into shot as the uh, video is playing, and maybe uh, bring it to about there as well. Tap done. And then, when it's saved the video, you can set it as your wallpaper there. So apply. And now, when I go to my lock screen, it should look something like this. Oh yeah! Something that has returned from the Galaxy S8, but has been enhanced for the Galaxy S9, is the always on display. Which is basically always on even when the phone is locked, using a tiny little bit of battery. So, if you wanted to turn that off, you go to settings and scroll down to lock screen and security and then go to your always on display and you can toggle it on or off there. If you decide to leave the always on feature on of course, there are a couple of features that you might not be aware of. First of all, if you double tap on the clock, that brings up options to take it to the music player and other options if you have those turned on. It's similar to the actual lock screen where you can swipe left and right to get different things, but you can enhance that if you want to by going to settings, then lock screen and security and scrolling all the way down to clock and face widgets. And here, if you go to face widgets, here's where you can add the music controller, today's schedule, next alarm. I just had a music controller on in that case, but as I say, you could toggle them on if you want to. You can also decide where these clock face widgets appear by tapping on the where to show. It gives you the option for lock screen and always on display or both. Now below the clock you do have notifications here which you can double tap on to jump straight to it. For example, there is a, a video notification here. Double tap that and it automatically takes me to the notification about video enhancing. And if you want to customize this clock, here's a way to do it. First of all, go to settings and then as before, go to security. And you want the always on display clock and face widgets this time. And if you go to clock style, you can change the clock style for both always on display and lock screen. In this example, I'm gonna change the always on display clock to an image. So if I scroll over to this image here, I've already put in my VGJ logo, but I could change it if I wanted to. I could simply close that off, add a new one, go straight to the gallery, we'll choose the logo again, apply that. And then when we go back to the always on display, Voila, there's the Video Gadgets Journal logo. If you don't have a suitable picture to add, you could add a animated GIF instead. It looks as if you can only choose pre-default ones though. We're going to go for a spinning flower here and see what that looks like. Oh, isn't that cute? Now you don't quite get the same flexibility with the lock screen clock face, but you can change it to various different options, such as this funky digital stacked one, or you could go with an analog one. And each of these, you could also change the color like this in the bottom right. And there's a different color palette. So plenty of options there for changing the clock faces on both always on display and the lock screen. And one last thing to show you about the always on display and lock screen, you can add a personal message. Just type contact information and then type in your message. Decide whether or not you want it to appear on lock screen, always on or bo both. And then you should have a message both on your always on display and on your lock screen. Hey ho, what do you know? And one final setting on the always on display, if you're finding that it's too dim or the auto brightness isn't up to scratch for what you're trying to do with always on display, you can go to the always on display setting, turn off auto brightness and then adjust the notch here so it's permanently set to a level that you're more comfortable with. I tend to leave it on auto brightness though. 
You may have noticed in this tutorial that I can swipe quickly through my Galaxy S9 because I have no security setup, but you will want to do that for your device. The best place to go is settings and then lock screen and security and start setting up these biometrics, whether it be face recognition, iris scanner, fingerprint scanner. These are all from the Galaxy S8 and if you want more information on how to set them up, check out my big Galaxy S8 tips and tricks video. The addition to the Galaxy S9 is the intelligent scan where it tries to combine two sources of security, which is your face and iris scanner. And this just helps if you're wearing sunglasses or wearing a hat that it still might be able to unlock your device and not struggle as much. So check these out, they all require various bits of setup, uh, so it will take a while, but once you've got it set up, you should have a very secure Galaxy S9. Take a screenshot on your Galaxy S9, hold the power button and volume down button, but just before I demonstrate that, I want to suggest that you go to settings, advanced features, and make sure that the following smart capture option is set up, because when you take a screenshot, it gives you extra options down here, which very quickly disappear. So, there's a screenshot. If I tap scroll capture now, what that's going to do is continue to take screenshots of this setting screen and stitch them all together, as you can see there. So with Smart Capture on, there's plenty more options to take advantage of, so make sure that you check them out and have it turned on. One final point on screenshots is that if you take a screenshot within a web application like Chrome, it stores the URL. So I took this screenshot of the BBC News and now I have the option to go straight to the site. So if I tap on it, it's going to go into Chrome and load up that web page again. Very useful. The Galaxy S9 has some Dolby Atmos speakers. To use them, they're hidden away a little bit in the settings. The best place to go is swipe down to get the main settings from your notification bar, and then swipe to the left, and you should see the option there. Now, if you long press on either the word or the button, this will take you into more options where you can have it for auto, movies, music, voice, and apparently, and I'm saying this word for word, it transforms your listening experience with a moving audio that flows all around you. Bear in mind, this is speakers from a mobile phone, so take it with a pinch of salt. Try it though, you may enjoy the sound experience, but just use some headphones. And speaking of headphones, yes, the Galaxy S9 does include a headphone jack. I feel a need to tell everybody that every time I do a phone review now, because it's kind of like an exclusive feature. Headphone jack, ooh. A far more fancy tool, however, is the dual audio mode that's found in Bluetooth. So, if you go to the Bluetooth screen, you can long press from the Bluetooth icon in the notification panel, as you just saw there, three dots at the top, and then dual audio. This allows you to sync up more than one Bluetooth speaker, so maybe you want to put several speakers around the house, and it kind of acts as a bridging gap for different speakers. Your Bluetooth does need to be 4.1 or above, and this is from the Galaxy S8, but also you could share it with multiple headphones as well. Flip side of replicating audio to multiple devices, you can separate audio from different applications. To do this, go to settings, then sounds and vibrations, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you have a separate app sound here. Now, what this enables you to do is have your phone playing the sound from one application, for example, YouTube, but then you could be Bluetoothing music to a Bluetooth speaker. So this requires a bit more of investigation and playing around with. I did a full tutorial on this on my Galaxy S8 video, so go check that out. It's well worth watching and, of course, listening to. And one more thing in sounds and vibrations, you do have sound quality and effects that brings up an equalizer, but as it says here, some sound effects are not supported when you have the Dolby Atmos uh, setting enabled, as we do here. So something to consider depending on what speakers and features you want to use. To add a blue light filter to your Samsung Galaxy S9, scroll down to the settings in your notification panel and you have this blue light filter here. If I turn it on, you'll see the screen turn orange and this is eliminating blue light from the spectrum and it's supposed to help you adjust to natural light in the evenings and fall asleep, whereas with it off, this screen might keep you awake a little bit more. There are some additional uh, functionality here. If you long press on the button, you can tell it to turn on now or schedule it with sunset and sunrise. So yeah, things to be played with there, check it out. Okay, do you want to create a GIF of some moving images on screen? You can do that by using the edge panel to the right hand side if you've not adjusted it. So just swipe in from the edge of the screen and you'll see this option for animation. 
This brings up a box and I can drag this box around the screen wherever I want. So I'm going to try and place it here in the uh, camera position of this YouTube video, which is of course mine. And what I want to do is record a certain part of the animation. So I'll let the video play. Let's see if I can get this right. So I've recorded that bit of the animation, as you can see, now it's a GIF, and I can save it as a animation. Brilliant stuff. Might need to edit it a little bit though. Now let's say I want to pin a static floating image to my screen. You can do this again through the edge panel. So if I choose pin to screen, and let's just make a box here of the YouTube video that's going on. Press pin to screen. Now that's just taking a screenshot rather than the video still playing there. That's multitasking. We'll look at that in a bit more detail later on but if I press the home button now it skips out of the YouTube app but I still have this pinned option here and I can do a couple of things with it I can make it bigger if I wanted to or smaller as you can see there so yeah a couple of options there for pinning images to the screen and we might as well finish off these edge panel options by looking at rectangle and oval screenshots so you can just add a little bit of variety to anything you're trying to capture on screen with a little a bit of a shapeage like that now, I'm sure we'll all agree that the Galaxy S9 has a beautiful screen, but Samsung wants to enhance it even further. To do this, go to Settings and then Advanced Features, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we have a Video Enhancer here. And this apparently improves the uh, vibrancy of videos, if I toggle it on, just makes it look a little nicer. And uh, the more apps you download, such as Netflix, uh, YouTube, all of those that should use the Video Enhancer if it's turned on, do you really notice any difference? Let me know in the comments below. Now, because of the unique screen size of the Samsung Galaxy S9, it will crop your videos in this letterbox mode. You can make it full screen if you want to by simply pinching out on the video, such as in YouTube. But bear in mind, it's gonna start cropping the top and the bottom as well. When you're playing a video, if you want to get back to the navigation controls of a device, just swipe in from the left or right. So now we can see the home screen button and return to our home screen. Now, who doesn't want a performance mode on a monster device? To do that, go to settings, then scroll down to device maintenance, and the option you want is performance mode. So you have different options here, and it tells you roughly what it's going to do with each of these performance changes. If I tap on high performance, it gives you a bit more of a breakdown of what's going on here, and then you can apply it. Obviously, this is going to consume your battery. And one more thing in the device maintenance area, you have this optimize now button, which does this. Marvelous. While the Galaxy S9 does have a timeout feature on it, it also has something called Smart Stay, whereby if you're looking at the device, it shouldn't go onto a timeout. Now this depends on a couple of things, that you're holding the phone upright and steady, you're in a well-lit place, and it's impossible to test on camera now, but turn it on and maybe it will stop the phone going into lock mode when you're using it but not looking at it. I should add that this doesn't apply to videos uh, where it wouldn't go into the lock screen anyway, but yeah, something to test. I've never really noticed the difference, but who knows, you may do. Samsung's personal digital assistant Bixby has returned again, woohoo! In order to access it from your home screen, swipe to the right. But if you don't want to do that, you can turn it off by pinching inwards, going to that panel and toggling it off. However, Samsung's not done with you there yet because it has its own Bixby button, which is here just below the volume rocker. So if I press that button, it will bring up Bixby as well. But of course you can turn that off if you want to by tapping on the settings button here and toggling it off. So now I can't get to Bixby either by swiping or by pressing the Bixby button. However, it still works if I press and hold Bixby like this. Go away. And it always seems to do this. Why is it not working for me? I probably not set it up. Good job. Another thing to be aware of is the Bixby briefing if you use the default alarm application. So go to your clock application and then in alarms, if you type on the alarm itself, you'll see here a Bixby briefing which reads information such as the current time and weather when the alarm rings. So do you want that on or off? Here's where you can decide. There is an internal struggle going on with the Galaxy S9 because not only do you have Bixby, but if you press and hold the home button on the home screen or anywhere when the device is unlocked, 
you'll get the Google Assistant like that. Now, if you want to turn that off, you can go to Settings and then go to Advanced Features and scroll down to Device Assistant App and then it's your device assistant app option here so it's currently set to enhance google services you could turn it off if you want to but it's your choice what do you want to have bixby uh, google home or none of them let's now take a brief look at the game launcher function to turn it on go to settings and then advanced features followed by games and toggle on the game launcher now, if you've got through all the terms and conditions, you should have a game launcher option here and it will show you the games that you currently have on your device. But also you've got some shortcuts here to change the performance of your device. If you want to put it into a high game mode or change it to high performance, it's up to you. Now, once you launch a game, you'll notice that your nav bar will disappear. But if you bring it back up, You've got options here to do things like uh, no, no alerts for the uh, duration of playing the game. You can do a screen recording, an auto brightness lock. There's all sorts of functions there to check out. Some apps will go into a pop-up mode when you press a home button. For example, with Google Maps, because I put in some directions and it's assuming I want to go somewhere, so I may want to keep this information on screen. When I press the home button, it goes into a pop-up mode here. I can drag it down to hide or I can increase it again to look at it. So yeah, just something to bear in mind. A couple of applications do that and you've just got to play about with them and see which ones uh, work and which don't. Videos is another one where pop-up may occur. And the last nice feature we have here on the Galaxy S9 is dual account. Go to settings and then advanced features, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see this one called dual messenger. So you could effectively create two Facebook accounts if you need to log into two for whatever reason and there will be other social media platform applications that can do this and it just allows you to use two separate accounts for the same application. Let's start our navigation tutorial with the navigation bar. In order to make changes to this, go to settings, then you want to display and scroll down until you see the navigation bar settings. Now, what you can do here is change the color of a navigation bar using these colors here. What you can also do is show and hide the navigation bar. Now, if I toggle this off, you'll notice this dot disappears. So that means it's fixed and permanent. However, if I toggle this on and then double tap this button, now the navigation bar disappears. In order to get it back, I would have to swipe up from the bottom of the screen and then to keep it persistent, I would have to double tap on the dot again, like so. Also at the bottom here, we have a button layout. We can switch the recent and back buttons like so. And finally, when the screen is locked and I press the home button, that brings up the lock screen. But if you wanted to jump straight into your Galaxy S9, you could toggle on unlock with home button. So now when I am on the always on display and press and hold the home button, that automatically jumps me into the device. Obviously, if you have security settings on, that may change things considerably. If you want to make changes to the Samsung default launcher, you can pinch inwards on the home screen and then you'll get options. You can do the same thing as well by pressing and holding on the home button down here. Now you may be wondering where is your app drawer for the rest of your applications on your Galaxy S9. There is no app icon to begin with. Instead, on your home screen, simply swipe up on any part of the screen to share the rest of your applications. If you swipe down, you'll also see exactly the same thing unless you start to change the settings. In order to do this, go to your home screen settings by bringing up the customization options and then going to home screen settings. The first toggle here, apps button, if you tap that and toggle it on, then you'll be able to have an apps button in your dock. And then secondly, if you turn on quick open notification panel, this will change the swipe down action. So let's go back to the home screen. You can now see that you have your app draw button there to get to your apps. And then if I swipe down, instead of bringing up the app draw, it brings down my notifications. If you wanted another way to access your notifications, go to settings and then choose advanced features and make sure that finger gestures is on. And this is going to use the finger sensor on the back of your device to bring it down your notifications. So just to confirm where that is, that's your finger sensor there. And so with any look, if I go back to the home screen and then swipe down with the, my finger on the sensor at the back, 
There you are, it comes down and then I can swipe up to get rid of my notifications. Doesn't work quite that well though, it's a bit clunky that. Uh, if you wanted to change that to something else, go again to finger sensor gestures and instead you could have Samsung Pay if you set that up. If you want to display your home screen in landscape mode, you can do that. We need to go once again to the home screen settings and the option here is portrait mode only. Turn that off and now when you tilt your device, the home screen is going to tilt with you, just like that. Doesn't look fantastic, I must admit, but if there is a need for it, you can do it. Application badge icons can show you how many notifications you've got from a single application, but it's been improved in recent times and now you can long press on an application to get a sneak peek at what those notifications are, as you can see there. Now, if you wanted to adjust the settings of these application badge icons, go to settings, notifications, then app icon badges. You can toggle it off or you can show it differently, so at the moment we have it with show numbers, or you could just have a simple dot next to your application for your notifications. Okay, Galaxy S9, big screen, can you use it with one hand? That might be tough unless you use the dedicated feature. To turn that on, go to settings, advanced features, and then one-handed mode, toggle that on, and then this is how it works. Swipe diagonally inwards from either of the bottom corners like so, and that will reduce the screen size to around about half. So now in one hand, I can definitely fit everything into the screen with just a single thumb. You can move it from right to left handed using the arrow there, and if you want to go back to normal mode, just tap anywhere off the current screen. Now let's bring it back into one-handed mode for one last thing, which I want to show you, which is you can change it from a gesture to the home button by going to the one-handed mode setting. So now, if you're on full screen and I triple tap the home button, that puts it into one-handed mode. So choose whether you want to swipe or use a button. Multitasking on a Galaxy S9, where do we start with that? Settings, obviously. You want to go to advanced features and then multi-window and make sure both of these options are toggled on to begin with. Right, let's do some multitasking. So if we open the internet application and then I swipe down from the top left hand corner, this will create a window out of the application. So now it's a floating browser. But what if I wanted to have two applications on at the same time in multitasking? If I go to recents and then load up the settings for example, I also have the floating application still here, but I can drag that to the top and now the top half of the screen goes blue and this will create a multitasking session. An alternative way of doing it is going to your recent lists, then with one application you tap the multitasking button here and so we have a second application that we can open at the bottom here, so let's choose the gallery. So again we have two multitasking applications open. So with two applications open, you have this blue and black bar in the middle. It could change depending on what the applications are. Uh, you can resize like this to make one application larger than the other. And then if you tap on the bar, you'll get several options. Some of those include flipping the applications around or turning one of them into a floating window like we had previously. Again, drag that up to the top to turn that once again into multitasking. And a final option here is you can turn these two applications into an icon on your home screen so you can quickly open both of these applications in multitasking. So if I press that button there, it's now created a pair icon on the home screen. So if I go to my home screen now, we have the gallery and Internet Explorer as two applications. I'll close down current multitasking so it's completely off now. But if I tap here, it launches both of those applications in multitasking. Very nice stuff. Another way to start multitasking would be to have an application open, such as a gallery, and then long pressing on recent buttons, so that splits my multitasking into two. So now we've got the internet running at the bottom. If I press the home button, that will take me back to the home screen, but you can still see that multitasking is running in the background. To go back to it, tap on the recents button, and then to exit out of multitasking again, press and hold the recents button like that to go back to my original gallery application. Have you noticed this little grey notch here? That's for the Edge applications. So if I swipe in, and you can do this anywhere on your Galaxy S9, it doesn't just have to be the home screen, you'll bring up options such as applications, you've also got contacts, and you've also got these smart select options which I've shown you earlier with doing GIF animations and taking screenshots. 
However, you can do a lot of modification here. Tap on the settings icon and then you can add all sorts of extra stuff including device maintenance, that might be one to use. You can download more of them as well and you can edit the edge panel by going to the dots at the top here and going to edge panel handle. Now here you can switch it from right to left, so let's put it on the left hand side there if I wanted to. I can bring it up and down the edge. I can make it bigger or smaller and if I know where it is I can make it completely transparent so that uh, now I know where the edge screen is but it doesn't interrupt the screen flow. So lots of stuff here with the edge panel if you want to use it. Of course if you don't want to use it you could turn it off right there. And then if you need to know how to get it back go to settings, display and scroll down until you see edge screen and then you can toggle it back on. Let's have a look at the notification panel now because there is a lot to get through. First of all, to bring down your notifications, swipe down from the top of the screen. If you want to get all of your settings, swipe down again. However, if you want to get to settings immediately, you can use two fingers from the top of the screen to do that. Now, when you bring your notifications down, you have these six favourite settings, but you can reorder these if you want to. Bring all of the settings up and then tap on the three dots in the top right and go to button order. And now what you can do is long press on any of these icons and then drag them around and rearrange them. So we'll put battery power at the top. Let's bring in flight mode and then tap done. So that now when I bring up the notifications, these quick settings are being rearranged with the flight mode and the battery in, but you can rearrange them as you please. There are tons of settings in this notification setting panel, so much so that you can swipe to the left and bring up even more settings. However, if you want to try and arrange this a bit more sensibly, you can tap on the three dots, then go to button grid and increase the size of the application, so we'll go to 5x3. And now we've got even more on this first page, but of course you still have to swipe to the left for whatever's left. If you wanted to add the brightness slider to this section of your notifications, bring it down the settings, then on the brightness section tap the chevron, go to show control on top, and so now when I do a single swipe down, we've got the brightness settings just under these quick settings here. Now, many of these settings actually have triple functions, if you can believe it. For example, a flashlight, I can tap on the icon to turn it on, I can tap on the word flashlight to bring up the brightness level, which is incredible in itself. And then for something like the icon for Wi-Fi, I can either press on the words to go into a mini Wi-Fi setup screen or long press on the icon to jump straight to the more comprehensive settings in the settings area of the device. And then when I back out, this is within the settings area of the Galaxy S9. So lots of options here from all of these different settings. Try practicing tapping the icon, tapping on the words, and then long pressing on the icon itself to see where it takes you. Now let's have a look at the notifications themselves. You can preview them by tapping on the chevron, so there we are, we get a preview of the Video Gadgets Journal logo, or I can swipe down on a notification like so. When you have more than one notification from an application, they will be stacked. For example, I currently have two notifications from the Samsung internet, and I can expand them to see them in a bit more detail, like that. Once you finish looking at multiple notifications from an app, you can collapse it again. And if you swipe on any notification, what you can do here is add a reminder. So let's say I want to be reminded by this notification again in say 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you can set it there. Or you can jump to the notification settings for this particular app and decide whether you want the slow motion editor to send me notifications. Turn them on or off, adjust the app icons and all sorts of options there for you to mess about with. You can of course dismiss singular notifications by just swiping them away like so. Or if you want to clear the whole lot, you can tap the clear button down there. And also note, as you go through your notifications, it will show you mini icons down here to let you know what notifications you have left. So it looks like I have one from the Samsung Internet Explorer and Google Play. If I scroll down you can see those icons disappearing as the notifications appear on screen. Now if you feel as if notifications are causing a problem and you need to sort them out wholesale, go to notification settings at the bottom here and this will allow you to adjust pretty much everything. So you can choose which applications actually send you notifications. I can tap on an individual one and then make changes there. You can also tap on unlock screen to show whether it displays the content, hides the content, and so all sorts of options there. 
and if you go to the top here we have app icon badges so this shows you whether the icon on the home screen shows a number for how many notifications you've got or whether you just want to show it as a notch all sorts of extra information there so go to notification settings have a play about and make sure it's tailored to your preferences you also have to bear in mind that notifications show on your always on display and on your lock screen so some people might be able to see these when you don't want to when you're not using your device to change these settings go to settings and find lock screen and security scroll down to where we have notifications here and you can turn off the whole lot of notifications when you're on a lot screen if you want to but there's also more additions here you can hide the content so you know a uh, notification has come from an application but not what the content is so plenty of things to look at here if you want to include notification security when your screen is locked if you want an application to notify you even though you're in do not disturb mode the best way to do this is to bring up the settings for the notification and at the bottom here we have a do not disturb custom exception so if I tap that it's going to ignore the do not disturb mode and still send me notifications when I'm in that mode another quick tip here for modifying your notifications I said you can slide to the right or left to get the settings but you could also long press on the notification as well to bring up whether or not you want notifications from the application or tap on details to go into even more notifications and on the maps there is a lot of different notifications you can turn on or off there is a lot to take in with app notifications and if you make a mess of things and you're not happy and you want to just start over again you can do so by going to settings then apps three dots at the top and then you've got this reset app preferences which will reset how your notifications work but just bear in mind it will also reset other things in your application so use as a last resort now when you get notifications you can set up the device so it has a fancy outline effect of lights to set this up, go to settings, then display and scroll down to the edge screen option. But what you actually want to do is look at edge lighting. Tap here and there is a cavalcade of options. Let's look at them now. So obviously you have a main option to turn it on or off. There are instructions here telling you how it works when a screen is on and when a screen is off and whether you want to have edge lighting with the screen on, off or always. Another thing to point out is in the top right here, tap the three dots, quick reply. And this gives you options on how to respond to alerts coming in when you've got the phone facing down and you see the edge lighting. Uh, you can hold onto the heart rate sensor to give a quick custom reply. And finally, and probably the uh, biggest thing here, here is the edge lighting style where you can go into all sorts of options to change the effects now we could go up through this endlessly and it will give you all sorts of fancy things going on and change the width and yeah you name it it can do it on here uh, just play around with it and see what preferences that take your fancy and at the end here we have manage notifications so you can tell the system which applications you want to apply edge lighting to if you don't turn them all on like that if you use a screen protector on your Samsung Galaxy S9 and you're finding that all your inputs are not registered, you can up the touch sensitivity by going to settings, advanced features, scroll all the way to the bottom and you have a touch sensitivity here. Plenty of interesting settings in the display options. First of all, auto brightness. It's not as simple as what you might think. Inside of the auto brightness screen, you have pattern usage. So it tries to adjust to your auto brightness preferences, whatever that means. You can reset it here so it starts learning again if the brightness is sometimes a bit weird on your device. One of the things I like about Galaxy S devices is the ability to adjust the screen size of some icons here at the top like that. You can also change the font size. I like to have it a little larger, it must be said. And you can also change your font style if you want to here. As for screen resolution, by default it's set at the midpoint, but if you wanted to try and conserve a bit of battery, you could put it down to HD+, uh, less pixels means less battery usage, but if you want performance, the whole hog, super sharp images, you can go right up to WQHD+. Going further down the list, if you look at full screen apps, this is because the Samsung Galaxy S9 has a slightly odd aspect ratio for a mobile device screen and some apps had letterboxing on, not quite as prevalent now since the previous Galaxy S8 but just in case you need to adjust any of the settings you can swipe through here and see which ones that might need to be changed such as the ones down at the bottom here but not so much of a big issue these days. 
I've always loved the LED indicator on the Galaxy S devices for notifications. That remains, but you can toggle it on or off there. And the status bar here, which is obviously this section here, you can toggle it so that it only shows three notifications, or all of them, as you can see here, until it fills up the top of the bar. And the battery percentage indicator is controlled here as well. The navigation bar we've already looked at in the Galaxy S9 features. Another battery saving option is the screen timeout, so you can set it to 30 seconds, 15 seconds, however long you're not using the device, that's the time it takes before the screen times out and locks your device. And here's another one of these funky Samsung Galaxy S features, block accidental touches. This will try and prevent you calling somebody when your phone is unlocked accidentally in your pocket. Give it a try, see if it works. And finally, we have the screensaver option here. So when your screen is charging, you can maybe set it up to show colors, photo frame, whatever it takes your fancy. When you use the volume rocker on your device, it will just bring up the main ringtone volume, but tap the chevron there to bring up all sorts of options for different volumes such as media, notifications, it can all be adjusted here as well as using volume keys for media as well. So if I toggle that on, now when I use the volume keys, it's changing the media volume instead of ringtones. There are of course a lot more settings you can change in sound and vibrations of your device by going to settings and sound and vibration. You have vibrate while ringing in case you want to have a phone shaking about as there is a ringtone coming up. You can also change the volumes here as well as we just saw with the volume rocker, vibration intensity. You can change that for different settings whether it be notifications, incoming calls, vibration feedback, it's all there as well. You've also got all the tones and music you would want to play when you're getting alerts and incoming phone calls. Scroll down to the system settings. We have touch sounds here, so when you're pressing the back button, selecting options, you might want some uh, audio feedback there. Uh, we've also got vibration feedback for when you're tapping on the home button, the back button. That gives you extra uh, haptic feedback from a device if you're into that sort of thing. And then with the keyboard sounds, if you're tapping on the keyboard, uh, you might want sounds at playing, uh, just a little click noise for the keyboard. and gives you a sort of a better feel, more in touch with a device. All of these are certainly preferential for each individual. So have a look through each setting and see which ones you want to turn on or off. If you want to get a snapshot of your storage currently, you can go to device management and then pick storage. And this will just tell you uh, how much space you've used versus how much is available and general information about what's using all of your storage. But you can take this a lot further, tap on the three dots in the top right and go to storage settings. And this will give you more of a breakdown of what's using your files. And you can jump to each section. So if I tap on photos and videos, that will take me to the gallery. But if I also scroll down down to the very bottom section where we have files, this will bring up a uh, file explorer where you can look in more detail uh, what's using all of your storage space. Uh, so a good place to start if you're filling up your Galaxy S9. Of course, one place where you can start clearing out some old storage which you don't need is the Clean Now button here, which just deletes unnecessary files, residual advertising files, that sort of thing. So let's do that right now. Bing! Another option that might be available to you on device maintenance is device security, although this tends to disappear if you buy a phone from a company like Verizon or T-Mobile where they include their own security, but this is an unlocked Galaxy S9 and it allows me to scan the phone for presumably viruses, malware, uh, and it's supported by McAfee in this example, but uh, yes, if it's not there, it's because your own tariff provider has decided to include their own security measures. Tapping on the memory will give you a RAM cleaner if you need to remove applications that are taking up uh, too much of your performance. And here's me thinking task killers on Android devices were a bad thing. As before, the Samsung Galaxy S9 does support SD cards, and if you want to put storage into the SD card rather than onto your device, certain apps will allow that. To do that, go to apps and then find an appropriate app. In this case, we're going to look at Photos. Then go to storage, and if you can change storage to an SD card, you should have storage used and a button here which says change, and then you can set it to either device memory or SD card. As I say, not all applications support this, so you may have to dig around in the app settings to find out whether they do or not. To keep your phone running nice and smoothly, you may want to try this. Scroll down to general management, then go to reset, and have a look at the auto restart option. This forces your phone to restart perhaps every evening 
say for example 3 a.m. and it just helps with if you've been having your phone on uh, for a month at a time and you've just charged it whenever actually restarted it this may help with any options that are maybe slowing down and things aren't quite right uh, so yeah give it a try and see if you know, notice a better improvement in performance on your phone and also in this area we have the options such as doing a reset the settings to default and it can be a more extreme or less extreme and just reset, reset network settings or do a factory data reset if you're ready to get rid of your phone in a year's time for the Samsung Galaxy S10. To change your phone name when devices are searching for it in Bluetooth for example go down to about phone tap the edit button here and name it whatever you like. Now that was a monster video on the Samsung Galaxy S9 but believe it or not I have an even bigger one the ultimate guide to the Samsung Galaxy S9 which has over 200 tips and tricks so make sure to check that one out and other ultimate gadget guides I've done including the Galaxy S8, Google Pixel, iPhone 10, and more. Enjoy the rest of your tech day bye for now.